Hi, everybody, and welcome to this lesson on looking at what is Azure DevOps. So we could essentially have DevOps, which is not on the cloud. You know, I have an on-prem DevOps culture or a DevOps lifecycle, but we could also have DevOps on the cloud. And one of the clouds that supports the DevOps culture or the DevOps pipelines is the Azure. So essentially, if you are deploying DevOps on the cloud, that's what's referred to as the Azure DevOps. Now, just a bit of history on the development of the Azure DevOps. So essentially, it came out back in 2006 when it was used as an on-prem DevOps and was referred to as the Visual Studio Team System, or you guys might have heard the term or come across the term VSTS. So that was essentially Microsoft's start into DevOps. And over the years, they have developed that on-prem DevOps culture into having it deployed fully on the cloud towards the end, which you guys see the Azure DevOps services and also the Azure DevOps server 2019. So Microsoft does offer both versions of DevOps, whether you want to deploy it on the cloud, which is the DevOps services, or whether you want to host the DevOps on your premises, which is the DevOps server 2019, which is the latest version. Some organizations also are still using the Team Foundation Server 2017 or 18 or the TFS. So you also might come across those terms quite often because a lot of organizations are still utilizing TFS. But the latest version is referred to as the DevOps Server 2019. So it depends on your organization whether you want to deploy the DevOps pipeline on the cloud or on-prem. Both options are available through Microsoft. And even if you're deploying it on your premises, so let's say you're using a DevOps server 2019 on your premises, you could, you could essentially have a hybrid version where you're utilizing some services on Azure and some services on your premises, which a lot of organizations decide to do based on various reasons, whether it's data security, organizational policies, and so on. So both services and the server you know, essentially, like I had just mentioned, are were known as the Visual Studio Team Services and the TFS. And they provide environments that support Git, Agile tools, continuous delivery, continuous integration, and so on. And the table here just shows you some of the main differences between the services and the server. Again, the main one being one is on the cloud, one is on premises. And, you know, the services has different options for scaling and scoping. Um, you, can, you can connect over the public, you can connect over the internet. So it depends on your deployment model, whether you are doing it on your premises or whether you're doing it on the cloud. Both options, like I have mentioned, are available in Azure. To help you better understand some of the terminology um, and the features between the service and the on-prem versions, right? So here, the table just basically shows you some of the main differences. So where in VSTS, it's referred to as build and release. In the DevOps and Azure, it's referred to as the pipelines. And that's the CI, CD that we had just referred to. The code is referred to as Azure repos, work, Azure boards, test, test plans, and packages are the artifacts. Now we will go through each one of these in more detail throughout the rest of this course, but this table, I just wanted to show you or demonstrate some of the differences in terminology that are used that you might come across. So rather than, rather than get confused, I just wanted to give you a chance to get familiar with some of the terms that sometimes you know organizations or people use interchangeably, but these terms refer to what version of Azure DevOps you are essentially using. Now, here are some of the main services that are provided by Azure DevOps, and that's the one that we will be concentrating on. So let's take a look at each one quickly. We have the Azure boards, and they make it easy to track task bugs and features. And you know, there's various types of items that are part of Azure boards, such as epics, issues, and tasks. And we'll take a look at each one in more detail later on. But Azure boards just allow you to implement that agile 
methodology in your application development and deployment. It has features such as Kanban boards. You could do Scrum. So there's multiple things you could do in Azure boards. And essentially, that's just allowing you to implement a methodology, an agile methodology within the Azure DevOps. We have the Azure repos. Now, before we talk, take a look at that, let's discuss quickly the version control system. So version control systems are software that help you track changes uh, that you made in your code you know, by taking snapshots of your files. Uh, one of the main examples is being Git. So Azure Repos is basically a collection of version control tools which are used to manage your code and provide version control. And they do that in two different types of versions. It has Git and it also has the Team Foundation Version Control or TFVC. Git, uh, you guys might have heard of, is a distributed version control system, which means that a local copy that you have is a complete repo, allowing you to work offline as well. And the TFVC, the historical data is kept only on the server since it's a centralized version control system. We have the Azure Pipelines is basically a combination of CICD or continuous integration and continuous delivery, which you can use to create and test your code automatically and give access to others. You can produce consistent and quality code with CI and CD. The Azure Test Plans, you can improve the quality of your code by obviously testing it. And the test plans, you can create and test your code manually or exploratorily as well. You can request, provide, and track feedback. You can also perform unit and functional testing. Running tests continuously is also possible with continuous testing. So with the test plans, again, allows you to implement that DevOps culture in a seamless fashion. So you deploy code that's been fully tested and fully functional to again maximize customer satisfaction. So these essentially are the main services that are part of the Azure DevOps lifecycle. Lastly, some key words to keep in mind or key terminology to keep in mind when working with Azure DevOps. First, we have what's called an organization. Now, a DevOps organization by default is your account name or domain name, but we are able to change it as well. Now, ordinarily, if you have one Azure DevOps account and deal with various domains inside, which means you can create multiple organizations within a single Microsoft account, which allows you to configure your access and security policies individually. Then you have projects, so you can split the organization into multiple projects and you can conf con configure access control, the pipeline, the build process individually for each project. So essentially one company can have multiple organizations and one organization can have multiple projects. So these are the main terms that we will be using throughout the rest of this course and that you usually come across when working with Azure DevOps. So I hope you guys got a good understanding of what is Azure DevOps in terms of just simple DevOps, because there are other technologies that you can use to implement DevOps pipelines, such as Jenkins. You don't need to use Azure, but this is Microsoft's version of the DevOps pipeline, whether you're using it on the cloud, which is the Azure DevOps, or you can also use it on-prem, which is the DevOps server.